Stealing is a lazy man's way, something for nothing, leaves you hell to pay. If you like true revenge stories, you're at the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, it seems that you might want to keep your enemies closer, ideally as your neighbors. We start off with a neighbor who takes a parking spot, but ends up without a car. Followed by a Karen neighbor who gets more plants than she initially took from neighbors. An Indian story in which the neighbor enters a nightmare, for taking money that wasn't hers. Lastly, neighbors gets prison time for taking someone else's parking spot. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. I have lived in an apartment complex in Lisbon, Portugal for the last four years. If anyone's from here, you'll know parking is a bummer. Fortunately, my building has a private garage. However, as is often the case, some parking places are more difficult to park in than others. I have one of the easier ones. Last year I was offered a job abroad and took it. Thought I'd be nice, parked my car at my parents, where they have plenty of space, and left a notice in the building elevator that went along the lines of. I'm the owner of 3B and will be away for at least 6 months, feel free to use my parking spot. Ended up being away for longer, almost a year. Came back to see my parking spot occupied, which was okay, since I offered for it to be used. Put another notice in the elevator, this time to say I was back and would use the parking spot again. Gave it two days, and picked my car up from my parents. Went into my garage, and my space was still being used. Had to park somewhere on the street, and decided to give it another day. The day after, it was occupied again by the same car. Asked a couple neighbors, and figured out it belonged to a lady living two stories above me. Went up to talk to her, and she immediately got defensive and said that her parking spot is very difficult for her to park in, and since I was away for longer than I had announced, I therefore lost the rights to that space. This is stupid logic, as the spots are bought with the apartment, it literally belongs to me. She also told me I couldn't use her parking space instead, as she was using it for storage. Went to the building admin, who said he'd talk to her. He did, and came back shaking his head. Nothing. I sent a registered letter telling her to stop using my space, and giving her 48 hours to take her car elsewhere. The next day I saw the unopened letter in the garbage bin beside the mailboxes. I ended up scouting my garage, waiting for her to leave, and would immediately park my car, hoping she'd take the hint. She didn't, and we ended up doing this dance for a few weeks. Up until the day I came back to see my entire driver's side keyed. That was the final straw. I talked to a friend, who owns a towing company. We chose a Saturday morning, the last few weeks she hadn't left home on Saturdays. I knew this as I had been watching her car like a hawk, so I thought we'd have big chances of her not noticing anything until everything was done, and towed her car. The plan initially was to leave the car just down the road. But that felt too close and too easy. Then I thought about leaving it in a city about 15 minutes away, but it still didn't feel quite right. My friend jokingly said, let's leave it in Madrid. FYI, Madrid is in Spain, about 600 kilometers or 375 miles away. I knew he was joking, but Madrid did feel right. I asked if he had enough time. He had, so off we went. Once we got to Madrid we went out for lunch, strolled around the city, and waited until it got dark and the streets were empty. In the meantime we had already decided on where to leave the car, a handicapped parking close to a police station. And so we did. As a bonus, my friend also took both license plates off the car. Then we drove back home. It has been two weeks, and I haven't seen her car since. One of these days I might leave a letter in her mailbox telling her to contact Madrid police, but in the meantime I'll enjoy being able to use my parking whenever I want to. This happened in the summer of 1974, when I was four years old. When I was a kid, we had a next door neighbor who was a total Karen. Karen was a 40 something woman who liked high heels, big jewelry, lots of makeup and wore long, 
flowy caftans and garish colors that did not flatter her. She had a big perm, remember, it's the 70s, a huge booty and was notorious in our neighborhood for being entitled. Her favorite thing was to go onto neighbors' grounds, either early in the morning or late at night, and steal decorations and potted plants, which she would then put in her back garden. I'm not joking or exaggerating, she would actually do this. She once even dug up someone's small tree out of their front yard, because, according to the neighbor, she felt it would look better in her garden. For the most part, she left my family alone. My family has a take no doo doo reputation in the neighborhood and she knew it. It was common knowledge that she hated kids. She only glared at me and my siblings, when we played outside. Sadly, that didn't last. One day, one of my sisters got badly sliced by a long nail, when she went to pick flowers off the passion flower vine on the fence, important later. Turned out Karen had hammered dozens of long nails into our fence, so she could hang potted plants, she'd most likely had stolen. The leaves on the vine had hidden the nails, until my sister got sliced. She had to get a tetanus shot, which made her sick all day. Mom was fuming, so she went out and actually spent the rest of the day hammering each and every nail back out, through the fence and back into Karen's garden, causing many of the pots to fall and break. This is probably why Karen did, what she did next. About a month later, my mom goes into our kitchen and sees a man in our yard. She goes out and asked, what are you doing? This guy told her he was a gardener and had been hired to get rid of the vine on the fence. Mom asked him who had hired him to do this. Apparently it was the owner of the fence he told her, and gestured to Karen's house. Mom told him, calmly, since none of this was his fault, that it wasn't Karen's fence and she was the owner herself. The poor guy was horrified. However, the damage was done. He'd already cut into the hardwood and roots and now our vine was dead. After the poor guy left, Karen also didn't pay him, we found out later. Mom went to Karen's house and confronted her. Karen didn't even deny it, just laughed in my mom's face and said, I did it, so what? It's not like you can do anything about it. Then sauntered back into her house. She just messed with the wrong family. Two days later, Karen went on a two-week vacation with her husband, he wasn't a nice guy. Revenge time. The day she left, my older siblings, along with a family friend, decided Karen's back garden needed improvements. So they climbed the fence, went into her garden, dug up all the pretty flowers and small trees, carted them out, along with the stolen decorations. And replaced them with high pollen weeds, quick growing ivy and lots and lots of poison oak and poison ivy, that they dug up from a nearby state park, I was too young to help with this part, sadly. We then temporarily moved our three dogs into our backyard, neighbor was afraid of them despite the fact they were two Pomeranians and a small mutt. We also had a nine feet fence, which was too high for her or her husband's big booties to climb, so we knew our garden would be safe from her. My family excitedly waited. When Karen got back, and saw her new and improved garden, she threw the biggest, most epic tantrum and meltdown we'd ever seen. It was most spectacular. A whole class of sugared up, angry preschoolers couldn't have thrown a bigger tantrum. My dad took the day off to see the freak out, as he put it. From the top of the fence, we all watched as Karen screamed and ranted. Pulled her hair. Kicked the weeds and threw anything she could get her hands on, all the while cussing and screeching like she was getting a chili powder enema. Then she spotted all of us watching her. She yelled and cursed at all us kids, while coming to the conclusion we had done this to her precious garden. By this time, all the surrounding neighbors were also watching, but she of course zeroed in on us. Karen then stormed over to our house and banged on our door until mom opened the door, dad let her deal with it, as he was still laughing his ass off. Karen then demanded my family to not only pull all those ugly plants out, and to, of course, pay for new ones and plant them. And to do it now. Right now. Our mom just looked at her, yawned, told her she had zero proof it was her kids who'd done it. Mom knew, even sat and watched with me as my siblings did it, laughing the whole time. I think at one point my dad even helped. Mom then reminded her she had stolen dozens of plants from the neighbors, 
had been caught blatantly stealing from their front gardens, yet was surprised that someone had retaliated? Mom laughed, told her to bugger off and went back inside. She ranted at us through the door for about an hour, till her voice gave out, then stomped back to her house. She avoided us from then on and would give a death glare to my mom whenever she saw her. Mom would just smile, give her the finger, and go about her business. She was intimidated by my dad and wouldn't do anything when he was around, but dad worked a lot, so wasn't there most of the time. We donated most of the dug up plants to neighbors she'd stolen from and returned the stolen ornaments and decorations to their rightful owners. We kept two rose bushes, which we planted by our back gate, a ceramic hearth cat and a glass and metal sun god decoration nobody claimed. Karen never did get rid of all the weeds and didn't realize it was poison oak she was pulling barehanded, until she, and her husband, got horrible rashes over one third of their bodies and, I was told, in some very unfortunate places. Life in the neighborhood became better in the long term, since from then on, no plants or decorations were ever stolen again. This story is about me and Gita. I am Indian guy in my 20s, strongly believed in individualism and equality, currently in university. Gita is probably under 24 and a clerk in a government bank. Which is a good job to have in India. She's my neighbor, we both live with our parents. We've been neighbors for around 8 years. We all get along just fine. We both are lower economical to middle class and socially from upper class. Both our parents are liberal in Indian sense, but in Western standards they are very conservative, you can say this for the majority of Indian parents. Here comes the story, I had to deposit $110 in the bank. This is a large amount of cash for a lower middle class Indian as myself. I am sort of lazy and didn't wanted to wait in queues in the bank, Gita worked in the same bank. So I thought, I will give her the money and she will deposit that in my account. I went to her house at 7 am and called for her mother. She opened the gate, it turned out that her elder brother of 28 and parents went to the temple. I told her why I came and asked for her help. She accepted the money and told me that she would keep the hard cash and will transfer the money from her account the next day. This seemed fine by me. I waited for two weeks. Money was still not deposited. I asked her about this several times, mainly from WhatsApp, but she just made excuses. After three weeks, I went to her house and asked her to give the money instantly. I threatened her that I will tell her parents. After hearing that she said, what proof you have that you gave me the money? Ask for money again and I will tell everybody that you are sexually harassing me. That was it, I became stiff as stone, my whole body became too heavy suddenly. I really had no proof and I had texted her several times saying, money hadn't been deposited yet or asking her when she was planning on depositing the money. Now before any of you western folks say that I exaggerated in this situation, you have to view the situation through an innocent Indian person. India is basically Middle East in terms of sexy time topics and personal space. The famous two-finger tests are made illegal recently in 2021. Also, men can't be violated in the eyes of the law. India has a national problem and this is one of the reasons of false accusations problem too. I've heard many false harassment and molestation accusation cases and personally even witnessed this with my distant cousin. He was in a dispute with his neighbor over some land, but ended up being charged with sexual harassment during all this. His neighbor simply used his beautiful clerk employee to charge him with a false sexual harassment case. Both my cousin and his neighbor had to bribe the police to let this case go. Back to the story, I hadn't talked to her again after that, but I had a plan to get my revenge. By this time, I had kept my eye on her for a bit, and found out that she buys alcohol every other Saturday from X place and drink it in her friend's place. This was done very secretively. She had to do it in a shady way, because it's seen as immoral for a man to drink alcohol, but it's seen as 10 times worse if a woman does it. I also found out she had a boyfriend, with whom she'd spend half an hour every Saturday's evening, at a park which is on the other side in the town. Having a boyfriend and girlfriend is also seen as immoral here, you won't even get a rental flat easily if you have one. I photographed her buying alcohol and them being together. First Saturday July 2019, on my way to the park, 
I found a police SUV a mile away from the park. I thought it would be time to get this plan a step further. I told them about a couple that are doing obscene stuff together in the park. The police officer didn't want to hear it. I knew I had to pay him, so I gave him $25 and he agreed to go. The park Gita used to go to, was famous for unmarried couples. So on every Valentine's Day, the police used to harass the couples there, to squeeze money out of them. On reaching there, I told him the spot and began to watch the situation from distance, I wasn't able to hear them but the view was clear. Gita and her boyfriend were neither kissing nor hugging, they were just talking in the bench that time. The police arrived and told them something, after that, the police slapped Gita's boyfriend a few times immediately. It appeared that her boyfriend refused to give his parents' number. In India, if the police caught an unmarried couple under 30, they demand the victim's parents' numbers. The whole drama went on for 20 minutes. Both even fall on police's feet. At last they had to give some money to the police to bribe him. Both looked pretty terrified that day. Next month, I printed out the images I had of her buying alcohol and being with her boyfriend. I printed every image tenfold. Why you might ask? Because there are 10 main houses in the neighborhood, including mine. In each set, there were three images of her buying alcohol and four images of her and her boyfriend together. I woke up at 4 AM, delivered these images to all the houses and went back to sleep. I woke up with loud noises coming from Gita's house. I had put one set in front of my own house too. I am pretty sure her brother slapped her a few times. Her mother was calling her bad names like Randy, I let you fill in what it means. Her father was not in the house that day. I asked my mother about the situation and she told me to stay away from Gita. She told me that Gita had shamed the whole society with her childish behavior. In the last month, she was forced to stay in the house by her parents. The whole neighborhood was disgusted by her even more so when it turned out, her boyfriend was from a lower class than they are, which fueled the rage even more. Her parents charged Gita's boyfriend for blackmailing them, which caused her boyfriend to spend a few days in jail, but he was released after a week. Her parents are trying to arrange a marriage for her now. She also needed to stitch her lips, because her brother literally cut her upper lips in half. A more recent update, she will be married on next year and she started going to the bank again. I still haven't got the money back though. Alright, story begins a few years back. My mom and I made most of the important decisions for the house, which only included us and my brother at the time, and my brother can't even do his schoolwork, so he got dragged along for the ride. At the time, we were deciding where to move, as our current place was expensive and terrible, and I hated the school district. I voiced this to my mom, and we immediately left that district for a lower rent place, as my brother didn't like the district any more than I did. And all was well. For like, the first week. And then our neighbor showed up. Only one really needs a name, so I'll refer to him as Roger. And Roger was a dimwit. Our first interaction with him was him parking in our parking space. Something that would become a frequent occurrence for him and his friends to do. This was a pretty big issue, because the only other parking we could realistically use was three blocks away. So this definitely ruined my mom's day when it happened, and watching her mood get ruined by a dimwit of a neighbor was never lovely. This added up over time, so I decided to retaliate against them, first, in a small way. At the time, we were still thinking it would stop, so I did something small. I told my friend to park next to our spot and give our neighbors a taste of no parking. This didn't end well. Roger parked his car in and immediately threatened him with physical violence. My friend told him he wasn't local and if he let him out, he'd be on his way. After I told my mom about this, she insisted that this was the last straw. Our landlord wasn't doing doo-doo to preserve our parking and our neighbors were threatening us with physical violence. Well what are we gonna do? I asked my mom. We're gonna run the lease up, and call some friends, she replied. And call some friends we did. Quickly, just because they incited our wrath by taking our parking spot, we did anything and everything we could to ruin Roger's life. Anytime we saw him, we would just smile and wave. 
he never knew we were behind any of this. My mom contacted one of her friends, who was a sheriff. He mentioned he knew of narcotics getting, allegedly, passed around in our neighborhood, but didn't know who was doing it. He told her if we got enough evidence, they could stake out his house to grab more, and eventually, that might lead to roping him in. Busting him with a drug dealer? That'd be sweet. We'd finally have parking back. So we set out to collect any and every piece of evidence we could. Audio of him screaming? Recorded. We'd smell through the walls? Times and locations written down. People parking in our spots? License plates noted down. I set up a camera to automatically record them coming and going. We had a thick book of a paper trail on when and what this guy did in his house. About 10 months into this, my mom left me out of the loop. Still not sure why, but as I understand it, my logging of license plates immediately lined up, and we found out Roger was the prick dealing narcotics. Half of the license plates we had noted down had led to arrests and searchings which resulted in narcotic findings. The cops were confident now, they had their guy and just needed a bit more evidence on him. Just four days before we were to move out, it happened. Six law enforcement cars swarmed his perimeter. Four of which were police cars, two of which were from Child Protective Services. I saw the door get kicked down, the guy get dragged out in cuffs, along with his wife, and three kids removed from the household and driven in the other direction. To this day, nobody except my mom's sheriff friend, who was very thankful, knew of her involvement, and according to him, the guy got quite a few years and won't see those kids again. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.